ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming Twitter.com video, let's discuss a rather gargantuan rumour that's popped up for AMD Zen processor, which is the successor to the pile driver architecture which we found in such processors as AMD's FX8350. Do you remember that there's a lot of pressure on AMD to really wow us with their processors and Intel haven't really done so with x86 recently. That's not to say they're releasing necessarily bad processors, but if you've got a fairly high-end processor, it's fair to say that Skylake isn't necessarily what you'd expect in terms of IPC gains. So, new rumours have popped up for AMD showing that their processor is going to be a much more Intel-like design, which is actually going to be quite beneficial. In fact, it could actually have considerable IPC gains over, let's say, Skylake. AMD at its heart are going to be switching to a one FPU per core design. Now, previously, when an FPU was being used by a core, the other core had to wait for the FPU to be finishing its current task. Now, the problem with this is that you basically had this kind of half a core design, and I know that doesn't really make sense, but if you know much about the architecture, you'll understand. Effectively, there was a lot of debate whether AMD's processor was truly an 8-core, and I don't want to waste too much of this video discussing that, so you can go ahead and do your own research on it, but the main reason behind that we, well, AMD cited anyway, was the fact of space. Quite simply put, the um, FPU units were fairly large, so now Obviously, we're going to be shifting to a sub 20N uh, architecture. At least that's the theory. Obviously, it's not been 100% confirmed yet. But if that happens, then it's going to be adopting a more SMT, which is, by the way, what Intel use SMT stands for simultaneous multi threading. And it's going to be leaving behind CMT. So every Zen core, theoretically, will now be able to run two threads. Now, you might have heard of other rumors, for example, um, the fact that the Zen APUs are going to have a massive number of cores and each one of those of course is going to be able to handle a lot of threads and this is the reasoning behind it. We've discussed at length about the cache scenarios before and with you know the information does appear to be fairly accurate. Each Zen core will have its own local level 2 cache of 512 kilobytes. For those who aren't too um, up on tech you might say 512 KB that's not much well for level 2 cache it is. Uh, especially for certain instructions, you're dealing with a very small amount of data, to be honest with you, because most of those instructions are quite simple, um, and, you know, they don't need, like, you know, 500 megabytes. It's not like they're dealing with texture data, for example. And each four cores of Zen will share eight megabytes of level three. So, this can quite, quite quickly add up, because an eight core Zen, just for the sake of argument, will that therefore have 16 megabytes of level 2 cache and you could even have um, scenarios of gargantuan amounts of level 3 cache. Obviously, it does depend on the number of cores and all of that jazz. The actual scheduler, which is obviously which um, is very simple, it's basically how the processor or the computer itself will schedule work for the processor to, well, process. So it does that in threads or processes, data flows, that type of thing. And obviously, as processes become increasingly multi-threaded, this means that complexities have arisen in terms of programming and the um, actual schedule itself. There's actually a lot to scheduling. It's not just simply saying, well, this instruction came first, therefore it has to be processed first. But because A, when there's multiple cores, it requires a lot more work than that, and B, sometimes uh, you have branches in code, you have situations where certain code is more important and therefore it must run faster. And this is, by the way, a similar problem, and I use problem in a loose term, but this is a similar type of situation which is actually arising even in GPU computing as well, uh, just so you're aware. But anyway, that in and of itself is going to be much more Intel-like. And from what we're hearing, even ISA instructions are going to be compatible between Haswell and Broadwell. Uh, well, at least that type of level of support. Now, it's very difficult to know, um, obviously, what type of performance gains that we're really going to be getting. Because one can argue that, well, what type of IPC gains is it going to be getting? Is it going to be getting gains which are equivalent to, let's just say, for the sake of argument, Haswell? Is it going to be more along the lines of Skylake? 
it's too difficult to know. But it is quite interesting because do remember the primary purpose behind Zen is to push up the single decoder approach, single thread performance in other words. Now obviously for any gamer, for anyone interested in PC in terms of the high end now, single thread isn't as important as it once was. Single thread for even DirectX 11 is becoming less of a big, big deal. It's still a big deal, but it's not as big a deal because, you know, we know DirectX 12 is kind of coming in and you can still run other stuff on the other threads and let's say games like GTA 5 and so on do show that multi-core threading is still very important. But what you don't want is to then cripple your single thread performance because that is just bad, okay? No, that is just not good. What we want is extra performance. And so hopefully AMD can get kind of a best of both worlds scenario. I'm hoping that we have a good amount of processor cores on the standard Zen models. Um, let's just call it Zen A because obviously that's not, you know, a name or anything. I'm just using it for sake of argument. And, into, and uh, AMD also release other Zen models which have a multitude of different number of cores and I'd be quite happy with that I've got to say I would like Intel to get smacked by AMD I would and that's not because I'm a fanboy that's not because I give a crap either way I support both companies I've owned processors for both companies but I, as I said I don't think Skylake's bad it's just not what we expect and some of it is down to the fact that it's becoming increasingly hard to push uh, increasing harder rather to push extra silicon or rather extra uh, transistors into a certain space of silicon some of it is down to the fact that you know I guess you could call Skylake almost a stopgap measure while we're waiting for say Canon Lake and all of these other processors but the real the real thing it really to be honest and I, I think we could all agree is that if Intel had a processor which was um, you know being absolutely slaughtered by AMD, they would have said, hey, you know what, let's actually release a processor that's got minimum of six cores. And there's a reason that the 5820K is doing so well at the moment. It's probably the best buy, especially if we're going into the 6700 territory, you know, 6700K type of level territory of spending, then it's a really good point of view of just saying, you know what, you might as well just buy the 5820K and that's not really good. I honestly don't feel Intel um, released enough processor cores with Skylake and obviously we will most likely be seeing Skylake E but I think Skylake E should have been the standard at least at this point where we are in computing in 2015 maybe that's just my opinion obviously you know but maybe you have a different opinion but it certainly seems to be the opinion of quite a lot of people I've been reading on forums and stuff but anyway obviously I'm not saying Intel will have a um, massively inferior processor to AMD even if it's roughly the same level of performance hell even if it's a few percent slower but Intel are more expensive and then they have to complete on a compete on a price front and you know that means that in that means that then everyone can say hey what about the next version of Zen and we all know that of course AMD are going to be releasing a Zen successor and all that stuff so as long as we see some nice improvements and AMD go into the right architecture, after all, we saw Bulldozer, we saw Piledriver, and Piledriver did improve things over Bulldozer, then I'm quite happy with that. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one. For now, take care and have a good night.